Uh. All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, December 21st, 2020. I am your host, Kim Matina, and I am a technology teacher as well as a Google certified trainer and educator. And today I'm so happy to actually meet and have on my show, Jeremy Wrinkle. He is um, he is a former high school English teacher and now he's an instructional coach. Uh, he is actually working on his doctoral degree or doctoral work in curriculum and instruction with a specialization in STEM in January, 2021. You're gonna be busy. So welcome to the Sweet Talk. Hello, good, good to be here. Um, as, as Kim said, I'm Jeremy Wrinkle, and uh, I teach in Vandalia, Illinois, which is about 90 miles east of St. Louis, four hours south of Chicago. So I'm glad to be here and talk a little bit about Google today. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm really excited to, to hear how you use um, the Google Suite or Google Workspace for data collection. I know... Um, you had said, oh, people who use Google Workspace or Google Suite, I don't know what the name of it is anymore. I can't get used to Google Workspace. But um, G Suite, um, you know, if they're familiar with Google Forms and spreadsheets, then data collection is going to be uh, something that they're familiar with. But everyone uses those tools differently because everyone has a different need. So you're going to showcase um, data collection using form sheets and sites. Um, to create a district curriculum map. So I'm interested to hear what that means and how you're gonna, um, how you used it. Okay, yeah, um, basically my first task as a curriculum slash instructional coach was to create a curriculum blueprint K-12 from math to English to whatever, whatever content area, just a complete little blueprint of if somebody new came into the district, we would hand them the blueprint. This is what's typically taught at this particular grade level, etc. cetera. Uh, our district didn't ha doesn't have one of those. Um, this is my first year within this district. And um, so far, loving the role. It's kind of morphed and, and changed because of what 2020 brought. But, uh, but basically, uh, my first idea was how can I get an idea of what teachers teach? And being familiar with Google and Google Forms, I decided to put together what I call a weekly planning form. Most teachers would think, oh, man, I have to turn in my lessons every single week. It's kind of kind of like that, but it, it's very, very simple information that I was willing to gather. I wanted to gather, you know, what standard are they hitting for the week? What lessons are they going to use? What f formal assessments? What um, for formative assessments, and then collect the summative assessment either at the end of the week or the end of the unit. So, so they submit that into you every week in addition to their lesson plans? Well, not, not necessarily the lesson plans, but they do su submit the, the weekly planning form to me, which is, again, you're going to be doing that stuff as you're planning anyway. So uh, at first, I, I teachers were like, oh, I really don't want to have to do that. But um, it's an, it was an important district initiative that we wanted to push out. So um, the majority of the teachers have been on board and I've gotten forms, you know, from probably about 90 percent of the staff members, which I thought that was a very solid um, response, considering it's a whole new role. It's a whole new uh, ball game. Uh, what I wanted to really get across to the teachers at the very beginning was it's not curriculum mapping like they may have done curriculum mapping in the past. and uh, so I wanted to make sure that that was clear as well. So I can go ahead and pull up the form here. Do, you, um, do I just hit share screen to do that on my end? Or do you yeah, hit share screen on the bottom and then I'll add it to the uh, stream. Okay. Okay, I see your screen. Okay, and then there is the actual planning form. Can you see that okay? Because I, I lose everything else when I did that. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, so the weekly planning form, basically uh, the, the week beginning, the content area in which the teacher teaches. And then I ask for the standard in which they are assessing or instructing on that particular week. With this particular one, I created a blue uh, 
a standards blueprint to where the teachers could actually click here and go and find their subject and content area standards and then just simply copy and paste them in. Another thing that we added um, into this form was an I can statement. So written from the perspective of a student, I can add and subtract two digit numbers would be an example of an I can statement. Any type of materials that they use, some teachers use uh, TPT or uh, textbook, uh, Google Slides, whatever, they can just type those things in there. Again, formative assessments was really important uh, to us to see how the students were being assessed or what, what ways the teachers were using. And then to add a link of the summative assessment. And again, I included a video on how to, uh, to do that here for teachers who were a little less tech savvy. And then always at the end, I always thought it was important for teachers on how I can assist them and how I can be of assistance to them throughout the week in their planning or uh, just how I can be of, of service to them. Because as a role of a coach, uh, I want to be a, a servant to them. I want to be able to serve them and help them in order to help their students be successful. So you get the data. So um, it's it's good to it's good that you said you had ninety percent of the teachers like on board and supportive about it for it. So that that's great, yeah. um, because right there that's a hurdle that you just you know pass. So um, that's awesome. And then so you get the data, um, and then what? What do you do with the data? Okay, so with Google Forms, it automatically creates the Google Sheet. So I'm go I'll go ahead and share my screen once again here, just so you can see how it kind of comes across. So basically what, um, I see your screen. Okay. So it comes in, um, just in the order in which the teachers turn it in. I go, I'm going back to August here. Again, it has the content area, the standard being covered that particular week, the ICANN statement, um, what they use. They use textbook, Google Slides, and then the formative assessments, again, were those check boxes that they could do. And then they would either tell me no, no assessment yet, or they would attach a Google Doc as an assessment. So basically, what I do from here, or what, I, what I've done from there, is then you can use the sort option, the, the data sort option in Sheets. And I can search by, I can organize it by content area. So this is all math. I can go by standard, sort it by standard. And then I have it here where you can sort it by teacher. So that's typically what, I, what I've done. And then once I have this information, like the physical science teacher did a wonderful job. I mean, every single week I had something from the physical science teacher. So I can go over here and look at the assessments she gave and even compare them to what the goal for the week was or the, the um, goal for the unit was. So, so once I have that information, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing real quick here. Once I get that information, I'm eventually wanting to create a, whether it's a handout or a binder or a, just a virtual document. And I was talking with one of my uh, co-coaches this week on how we can utilize all this information we're gathering. Plus again, use the data that we're getting just from the teachers on their planning and what is important to see where we have holes in our curriculum from the standard standpoint and even even in the instructional standpoint what because if a teacher says oh we're going to cover this but then their assessment doesn't match up to the objective of that week we can kind of have those conversations and help them with their planning to make sure that what they say they're teaching is what they're actually assessing and again that's not a i got you but it's a it's a helpful thing to make sure that students are achieving what they need to achieve and then the teachers as well so is it more like, okay, I understand it's more like uh, it's curriculum for your subject areas, but is, is it also a pacing guide too? like when they should right. complete that unit, you know, during the year? Is it 
Correct. in that respect as well. Right. It, it's it's helping them build a even a scope and sequence uh, for future years. Like, for instance, uh, one of our um, teachers is leaving at the semester because her husband is in the military and being um, going overseas for three years. So she is moving with him, obviously. Uh, so we have an, a brand new social studies teacher coming in. So basically with nothing really in place other than what the other teachers that are in the department tell her, she has the new teacher would doesn't have anything really to go by on what, how much time to spend in world war two and how much time to spend in Vietnam and the 1960s and stuff like that to where if we could provide an example of an assessment as well as objectives and stuff like that to the teacher, at least it's something to give them um, and to guide their instruction um, in a whole new role. And it's really important whenever you get brand new teachers that have never really been in the classroom to just have something to go by or something to look at as a guide, but yet give them the autonomy to make the classroom and the class theirs. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Now the, the data do you allow the teachers to actually see the data? Do you do you give them access to this to the um, the spreadsheet and allow them to see um, the pacing or see other responses? Yeah, well, basically, our, our district is re relatively small. Uh, mainly at the high school level, there's a algebra one teacher. Um, an algebra two teacher, a geometry teacher, and then at upper levels like calculus, pre-calc, trigonometry, and that, and that nature. Uh, only a couple of the teachers teach multiple subject areas. So we have one teacher that maybe has one session of algebra one, and then the other teacher has the rest of those. So it's important that those two keep pace. But for the most part, all the other courses are are taught by the same teacher. So it's not as important to keep pace and keep scope and sequence, uh, especially throughout the semester. So I guess, I guess what I'm asking is like, when you get the data, you want to, you want to present it in a way. So what, how are you taking the data? And like, I know you said you sort it and all by different uh, criteria and all, um, but are you making it available for the teachers to see somewhere? Because when you do have a new person come in, like where do you instruct them to go to see okay. this information? It is a work in progress. I'll go ahead and share my screen again. Oh, there you go. That's uh, all you have to say. It's a work in progress. <laughs> definitely. And that's what, that's what all this year has been a work in progress. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, so, so basically you go, we go from the Google form to the Google sheet and then to the Google site. And that, that's what the work in progress is. Um, you're not going to see a correlation yet between the Google sheet and the, the, um, the actual Google site yet. I can kind of show you where it's going to be and what it's going to kind of look like uh, based upon where we're at at this point in the game, which yeah, we actually started this like the Google site part like two weeks ago, because we do want to get something in the teacher's hands to, to actually, okay, this is, this is what we're doing with this data. So it's important that you continue to give it to us this whole year. And again, this year is going to be different than the way that they would teach it next year. The pacing is probably going to be off. It is going to be off this year. And we, we're accepting that we we've got to accept, you know, I, I'm happy if we see growth in any growth at all. So um, yeah, this year doesn't count like because of that, you know, because right, of the pandemic. Right. And stuff. But I, like you said, if you see any growth, it's, it's a bonus. Right. Right. And some of our diagnostic testing that we do, we are seeing growth from fall to like September to now, because we just uh, did a diagnostic uh, assessment test this last week and we have seen some growth. So we're very happy with any of the growth that we can, that we can provide. So I'm going to show you're, you're in a high school, right? I'm actually a K quite K 12 district. K twelve. Uh, so you focus on the upper grades or are you like through K 12? Um, K 12. Uh, okay. I have a co-coach. Um, she comes from an elementary background. I come from a high school background. We complement each other really well. Um, in fact, I always joke with her that, that the elementary teachers would probably be uh, have be skinning me up by now if if I wouldn't have had her to to kind of guide me in the ways of doing that. So 
Um, so here is actually what the what a new teacher would see if they come to our district. Uh, what, again, once we get it launched, we want to provide again uh, over on the left hand side just the the core standards for ELA and math, and obviously the state standards for for uh, social studies, uh, the NGSS for science. I still have to add. Again, this is a couple. A couple of weeks ago, we began work on this. Uh, we're going to provide planning resources here. Uh, here is actually the assessments and pacing. I'll go ahead and click that and see if I can get it to open here. Actually, I have to go to preview real quick and get that to transfer over just so you can see what that will look like. If you look on the left-hand side is the navigation bar. And then if I go to this particular document, this is what it's going to eventually look like for our math curriculum, basically unit one. Coming, coming down, you'll see the, um, the lesson and the standard. And those formative, the formative and the summative assessments will, that will have a link here for them to go and look at. We will have, once we add to this, you'll actually have, okay, this is the first first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter on that particular document. Breaking down ELA into phonics, vocab, reading comprehension, and then writing as well. So what I plan to do with the actual data that we that we get from the weekly planning form, there will be a pacing and weekly planning form section here, and it will it will have the spreadsheet for that particular topic area. So if it's physical science, basically this information will be made available in a Google sheet for that particular teacher to click on. Boy, you have your work cut out for you. Poof, that's a lot of information. A lot of it's information. Time. Yeah, and, and it's not gonna be finished in a year, you know, I mean, we're going to look at this year as as a trial run. Uh, like like I told my administrator the other day, if we can get teachers in the habit of just doing that weekly planning form for next year, that way we can get our pacing set up a little bit better. That's going to be valuable to have assessments, uh, common assessments, especially in the math and the ELA area at the elementary level, because right now we've got five like first grade. There's basically five teachers at every grade level. And if we could get them using common assessments, which some of them, some class levels do, but not everybody's on the same page with that yet, but we're getting close to getting that done. So, so you're, this is kind of like your pilot year then, right? Like you get in uh, people used to it and then next year you'll really have you, them, have them all participate right, in it. Right. Participate in it and be more consistent because whenever I say 90% participated, that's, that just means they've submitted three or more weeks. So, okay. so basically there are some that have submitted every week. Some are very sporadic again this year, especially with the circumstances, I wasn't wanting to push too hard at this point, especially I'm new to the role. I'm new to the district. So I, um, really focus on those uh, relationship building pieces uh, that are so important, especially whenever you want to push out initiatives in the future. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, I think that's the good, a good approach and it's safe because you don't want to push people and overwhelm them even more right. Right. under the circumstances that we are in right now. So that's um, a good way of looking at it, you know, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely going to take a lot of time. That's a lot of information. Now, one, I know I asked you this, but if the teachers fill out your form, do they still submit lesson plans separately? Or is that considered like their lesson plan? Like, can they use that as their lesson plan for administration uh, to, you know, to satisfy administration? Right. Um, our, our school district does not require the teacher to submit like formal lesson plans. Uh, they oh, okay. have to keep their lesson book, their lesson plan book, and obviously they they want teachers to be prepared, but it's not a required thing. So to even have them fill out the weekly planning form was a, kind of a stretch in the very beginning because well, why why are they having us do this now, uh, especially for the vet some of the vets? Vet yeah. Teachers. 
but but they understand the importance of a curriculum map. Before I was hired, before my co-coach was hired, uh, we were both um, – the district was in – they had a curriculum planning committee that ha- were making steps on creating this blueprint, but not um, – they hadn't began the process and then we went through the interview process. And this was one of the first things that they wanted us to do. In addition to finding a um, K eight math curriculum. And yeah, that's funny how, how like in, in uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but like, you know, like we're, we have to submit lesson plans in New Jersey, at least in my school district, we have to submit lesson plans, you know? So it's funny to hear that, your school district doesn't require that, you know, it's just in the different in the districts I've taught in, I've taught in four different districts. I've never, I never, even as a teacher had to submit formal plans to my administrator unless it was evaluation week. When it was evaluation time, I had to have the formals. But other than that, as long as I kept a lesson plan book and I I typically, you know, I I would plan out a, a quarter, a quarter at a time, and a lot of times, you know, the, those plans would kind of go by the wayside a little bit because sometimes it would take longer to do change. something and change. And, and that was fine. But I always myself like to have a quarter planned out. And whenever I didn't have a quarter planned out, it was uh, I mean, obviously, when, you know, March hit and we, we got shut down here, uh, it was all the like, plans just dropped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, OK, you know. I, I had reached out, you know, social media wise to try to connect to my kids and, and even b- before the, before the pandemic hit and they weren't too keen on us, you know, you know, having our students on social media, but that was the easy, I mean, I could just reach out to kid, Hey, you know, tell your class to meet at this time because we're going to be on this link. And, and that was one of the ways that I had to communicate, had very few kids participate during that march to uh the end of the school year mainly because where i was at at the time there were really you couldn't hold kids accountable to grade and and rightly so everybody was just in like panic mode didn't know what to expect uh but like I, I mean, since moving districts i've been so impressed with like i said we saw growth on that diagnostic we, we had SAT scores from 2019 when the kids took them and then our kids took them in October and basically we went up in the ELA. We stayed flat in math. I think that's a huge victory to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and then especially we, after everything that we've been through with right. and, and the equity piece too, like it, it's, right. it, there's so many external factors that, that have such a huge impact on, on, one's education this during this pandemic it, it's to to have any progress it's it's a bonus yeah that's and, and, great yeah and then even to just just think about a little bit about the um about education in general where is education going now that we've done this you know does education have to be five days a week do kids have to be in school all the time what is what could what could we learn from this so uh, very interesting times. That'll be interesting to hear different opinions because, you know, I think students learn best in person, face to face. They get to the classroom environment. But, you know, as far as, um, you know, and then you have to worry about like accommodations and everything. So I don't know if it if it'll ever be like a virtual school like a college, but I think practices will change. I think right. teachers are going to be forced to use different um, methods of teaching, Yeah, you know? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Only time will tell yeah. is that it'll take a long time to, to see any type of change like that to happen, you know? Right. Right. I mean, we're looking at, you know, since the 1950s is when, you know, we went through a revamp of education and man, things have changed since the 1950s. But I still think, you know, like you said, in-person learning, especially with with the students of today, there's just so many distractions at home. You hit the nail on the head with equity with, you know, 
there's still a huge digital divide, even in this country, uh, depending on where you live, uh, the access. Yeah, things like exactly. That. It's, it's, I mean, like I know my district, we, we gave out 1900 devices and like, that's, that's huge. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it's, you can't assume that everybody has a device and internet access and, and that's in, not even included in like hotspots. Like we gave out hotspots too, uh -huh. you know, it, yeah. it's, it's, I don't know. They like, I, I just think things would, ch things will take time to change if you want to move into a whole different direction. It's just going to take time. Right. Definitely. You know? But let me ask you something before we wrap up. Did you ever look into, uh, Google Data Studio? I have, and I'm barely glossing the surface with it, but I'm, I'm anxious to see what that what that would look like, even with, because a lot of our diagnostic tools that we use, um, our testing that we do, um, gives us raw data. Uh, you can download the raw data of that, and then you could embed that or pull that into Google Data Studio. And I, I took the D Google Studio, uh, data studio like the the free course that they offer in it and i just haven't had enough time to play with it yet but it's definitely on my list and uh there's some uh workshops that are webinars that i've wa watched and and planning to watch that hopefully i can take a deeper dive because i'm a i'm a data geek i'm a research geek and that's that's why i'm excited about this doctorate degree because everybody's like do you know how much work that's going to be and i'm like I've waited 10 years for this. Literally, I got my last master's 10 years ago. And my wife said, no more education. <laughs> and, and I I finally, after 10 years, she finally said, go for it, babe. So I'm, awesome. I'm going for it. But uh, data and research is my jam. So um, definitely. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that you've looked into it because I was going to recommend that you should because uh -huh. you can you can import like, uh, a Google, like a spreadsheet, Excel or a Google sheet into it and use it as a data source and uh, generate, you know, graphs and um, you can, you create, um, I, I don't know what it's called, but you can create, like, just say it's called a page mm -hmm. and um, you can add different objects on there. You can add like, you know, that, you embed a map or whatnot. What's that? Was it the dashboard? Is it's it not the dashboard? dashboard. It's uh, it's something else. Like, cause when you when you let me log in, let me see, Google Data Studio. Um, when you log into it, you can create different reports. That's what it is. That's what it's called. It's and report. each report, each report can have different data. And um, the data can come from different sources on different reports. And you can have like graphs and line charts and you can have like a world map on there. You can have text, you can have pictures, images, mm -hmm. anything. So you can grab like the report and create a report just for your teachers or just for your um, subject areas or just for like a standard. Okay. And every time the data source gets updated, that refreshes. Okay. Yeah. It definitely sounds like something I need to look into more, especially whenever it, um, reporting this data to the superintendent and reporting back to the board of education, having something that, that looks nice, that that's yeah. easy to read, uh, is definitely beneficial. I mean, Google and then you can embed it onto your website. Yeah, that's good. So good. I would definitely look into that because, I mean, I use it for the Sweet Talk, but my report is just a spreadsheet with all the episodes and mm -hmm. and uh, links to the YouTube and the and the show notes. But I dabbled around with it because I had somebody on that introduced me to it, uh, Wanda Terrell, and. Um, I was amazed of what they had and they even have like templates set up for EDU. So you okay. may have, you may be able to utilize that 
Um, yeah. But it's and it's free, so I would definitely check it out. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that it's been a few months since I've looked looked at that and looked at the the options and stuff. I just didn't have enough time to play with it at the time. And now that th now that Christmas breaks here, maybe maybe I'll have to dabble with it a little bit. Well, you'd have to recharge your batteries first, and then jump into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very. True. It'll come in time. But like I tell people, you know, when, when you love what you do, it's hard to put it aside sometimes. And but but it's, it is very important to recharge as well. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Well, I'm so glad to have you on tonight. I'm so glad that you shared. Um, your workflow on creating a curriculum map. I think it's important. I know like at my school, we have a curriculum map or a pacing guide. Um, you know, it's basically kind of the same thing in my mind, in my perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that your workflow and the tools that you're using are going to be able to, you know, portray the data that you're looking for. So I'm glad that at least um, you're using Google Workspace and you're not paying for something and you're able to customize it for your needs. So that's great. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you were able to share tonight with, with the audience. So thank you for being on Jeremy. I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for having me. So that wraps up the show. So what I'm going to do is share my screen really quick and, and uh, and my website. So you can visit the sweettalk.com. That's the S U I T E talk.com. And on the homepage, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, my blog, follow me on Twitter, uh, join the Facebook community. And, uh, the sweet talk is on Podbean, Spotify, Apple podcasts, and Google podcasts. Uh, the latest episodes will be here on the homepage. Uh, you can check out the new book that Alice Keeler and I wrote, Stepping Up to Google Classroom, 50 Steps for Beginners. It's available on Amazon. Um, if you'd like to support my mission to pay it forward and help other educators, you can become a sponsor of the show. Um, just fill out the form here when you click on this button. Um, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, uh, you can click on this button here. and. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Right now, I am scheduling for March 2021. So I'm so thankful for that. Uh, all the latest episodes will be here on this page. And this is the part here, Jeremy, that I was telling you about is Google Data Studio. So all the links in the notes, uh, this is a Google Data Studio report. So, um, and you can check out my Jamboard page. So I have a lot of things here about Jamboard. You can check out my idea board for Jamboard uh, right here. You can share your idea. If you're using Jamboard, uh, click on this button here and you can fill out the form and share your idea with me. And I will add it to the resource with other educators to pay it forward. So was I sharing my screen? I didn't no. see anything. I didn't <laughs> see it. Uh, oh, that's okay. I, I thought maybe you were just showing it to somebody else. I, I didn't know that I was supposed to. I should have said it's something. It's all good. You should have said something, but that's okay. I said it anyway, the same way I was oh, sharing okay. it. So it's all good. Um, anyway, that concludes our show for tonight. Um, our next, my next show will be next Monday. So I hope everyone can tune in. Until then. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye.